We will now consider the requirement and method of weighing aeroplanes. Aeroplanes are initially weighed by the manufacturer or an approved maintenance organisation. The procedures necessary before weighing is accomplished are displayed on screen. Prior to weighing, a check is carried out to establish that all the aeroplane equipment is complete and all fluids are accounted for. Prior to weighing, the aeroplane must be clean and it is very important that the weighing is carried out in a fully enclosed, draft-proof building with the air conditioning off. There are stringent standards imposed on the equipment used in the accurate weighing of aeroplanes. It must be calibrated, zeroed and only used in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Each scale must be calibrated by the manufacturer, by a civil weights and measurement department or by an authorised organisation within two years. This could be less if stipulated by the manufacturer. In a previous lesson, dealing with the regulations in EU OPS, the use of fleet messes was described. To establish a fleet value, a certain number of aeroplanes must be weighed during a period of two mass evaluations. The interval between two mass evaluations must not exceed 48 months. There is a table in EU Ops 1 which details the number of aeroplanes to be weighed to obtain fleet values. On screen you will see a table with two columns, one indicating the number of aeroplanes in the fleet and the other the minimum number of weighings. The letter N in the table represents the number of aeroplanes in the fleet using fleet values. In this example, the number in the fleet, N, is 19, which, when added to 51, equals 70. Dividing by 10 will result in a minimum number of 7 weighings required to establish fleet value. There are a number of ways of weighing an aeroplane accurately, and the equipment used will depend on the size of the aeroplane being weighed. For most light aeroplanes, a weigh bridge scale is used, which consists of a separate weighing platform placed under each wheel assembly. Larger, heavier aeroplanes will require the use of hydrostatic units, which consist of a closed hydraulic cylinder interposed between a lifting jack and a jacking point. The pressure generated is proportional to the load applied, which will register mass at that point. Electronic equipment can also be used on large aeroplanes. This uses a strain gauge, employing the principle that resistance varies with the load applied, which will register the mass at that point. They are also fitted in the same way as the hydrostatic units. Now we can look at a simple weighing schedule for a light aeroplane. The aeroplane is placed on weighbridge scales and the individual mass is read at each wheel. Notice the position of the datum and the arm relative to the nose and main wheels. The list of basic equipment must be checked and fitted in the aeroplane prior to weighing. A table is constructed in columns indicating item, mass, arm and moment. First, the mass readings for each wheel are entered and totaled. Entering the arms, we can calculate the individual moment by multiplying the mass by the arm. Finally, the total moment is calculated. In this case, the total moment is 325 kilogram meters. We now have the basic empty mass and total moments of our aeroplane. The next step is to calculate the basic center of gravity from the total basic empty mass and the total moment.
the lesson on mass and balance definitions, stated that the centre of gravity is found by dividing the total moments by the total mass. The total moment is 325 kilogram meters, and the total mass is 600 kilograms. And by dividing them, we establish that the centre of gravity is plus 0.542 meters aft of datum. The person responsible for completing the weighing schedule must sign and date it, and the schedule is then retained in the aeroplane technical log until the next weighing. As an example, a more complex large aeroplane weighing report is produced here. You will notice that two sets of readings are taken and a net mass recorded, which is then subject to some adjustments before arriving at the final total mass. The schedule is signed at the bottom by the responsible engineer. In this lesson, we have looked at the procedure for weighing aeroplanes and the type of equipment used. In addition, we learned how a simple weighing schedule was produced when weighing a light aeroplane and how this was used to determine the basic centre of gravity. To conclude the lesson, we looked at a more complex weighing schedule for a large aeroplane.